Crash course and probability. First, you need to know when they ask you a question about probability, it's going to look like this. P for probability. What is the probability of whatever's inside the parentheses? So I've given you a couple scenarios here. Flipping a coin and rolling a dice. If you flip a coin, two different things could happen. You could land on tails or heads. So when we write our answer to probability, we almost always write it as a fraction. At least we start off as a fraction. Sometimes we'll convert it to a decimal after that. But start with a fraction, and usually your answers will be in fraction form. So the fraction, the bottom number in the fraction, is the total outcomes, which is just a fancy way of saying how many different things could happen. So with a coin, two different things could happen. You could land on heads or tails. So the bottom number, the denominator of your fraction for a coin would be 2. And then the top number is whatever the outcome is desired, whatever you're trying to figure out the probability for. So let me just say probability of tails. What's the probability of flipping a tails? A lot of our two outcomes that I listed, I listed all the outcomes here. There's two of them. One of them is tails, so it's one half. And then same thing with rolling a dice. What's the probability, say, of rolling a three? Well, how many different outcomes are there? There's six. There's six different numbers on the dice. How many of them are a three? One. So there's a one out of six chance of rolling a three. Now, that's pretty basic. That's your introduction to probability. What this test is more like is a combination of probabilities, multiple things going on at the same time. For example, what's the probability of flipping a T in your left hand and rolling a 2 in your right hand? So you're doing two things at once. Well, then you would have to know all the total outcomes. So if you flip a T, a tail, you might roll a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, or a 6. That's six different outcomes with a tails. You could have a tails with any one of these six. And then it's the same thing if the coin lands on heads. It could be paired with any one of these six numbers. So there's six different outcomes for tails, and there's six different outcomes for heads. That's 12 different outcomes. How many of them are specifically tails and two? Just one of them, one out of the 12. That's showing the whole sample space. This is called a sample space, and all 12 outcomes and then you can pick out of those 12 how many of them are T and 2, just one of them. The faster way to do an AND problem is to just figure out the, the probability of each one individually. So what's the probability of flipping tails? One half. What's the probability of rolling a 2? One sixth. And AND means to multiply. One half times one sixth is one twelve. So there's one out of these 12 outcomes is T and 2. And 1 half times 1 6 is 1 12. So no matter which way you do this, you should get 1 12, 1 12 as your answer. All right, and it doesn't necessarily have to be dice and coins. You could be shopping for shoes, and you could have three different kinds of shoes, Nike, uh, Converse, and Vans, and they could come in four different colors, and we'll just say red, green, purple, and orange. So how many different outcomes would there be? Well, each shoe has four different colors with it, and there's three different shoes, so three outcomes here, four outcomes there. Multiply them together, that's 12 different outcomes. So if we were to do a probability problem, our bottom number would be 12, because that's how many different outcomes there would be. And if I wanted to know what's the chance of getting a green pair of Converse, well, only one of those 12 choices is green converse, so it's one-third times one-fourth. So it doesn't have to be coins and dice. It could be anything, sandwiches, shoes, whatever. Basically, all you're doing is multiplying the probability of column A times the probability of column B, or if it's written out like this, probability of converse and green, then it's one-third times one-fourth, which is one well, okay, that's half the battle with probability. The other half is picking stuff out of a hat or out of a cup at random. So here's a fancy cup. 
that'll probably be worth money someday because it's so beautiful. And let's say there's six quarters in there and four dimes and five pennies. All right, when you get problems like this where you're randomly picking stuff out of a hat or a cup in this case, they're going to tell you it's with or it's without replacement. With or without replacement. With or without replacement. What that means is you're going to be pulling two or more items out of this cup and you're either going to put that item back after you replace it. Time out. What? Sorry. Go ahead. Lunches? Yeah, I didn't change it right there. Rookie. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Sorry about the interruption. <laughs> okay, so with or without replacement. Let's say I pull a coin out of this cup and I put it in my pocket and then I hand the coin, the cup off to somebody else. There's less coins in that cup than there were when I pulled one out of there because I put that one in my pocket. So there's 15 coins in there when I take one out. Then I hand it off. Now there's only 14 coins in there. That's without replacement. I did not replace that quarter. I said, oh, that's a nice shiny quarter. I'll keep that. I did not replace it. So when it's without replacement, you're denominator is going down by one every time because every time you pull something out there's one less than there was the time before if it's with replacement then the cup is the same every time if I pull a quarter out and say oh that's a nice looking quarter and I put it back in the cup and I hand it off it's the exact same cup as it was when I pulled one out the next person still has 15 coins in there they could get the same quarter that I pulled out so then the denominator stays at 15 so let me show you an example what's the probability of a quarter and well let's just for ease of problem here how about oops a penny and a dime so what's the probability of pulling out a penny and a dime well you need more information you need to know is it with or without replacement so I'll do them both ways so we'll say this first way is with replacement so I'm going to replace that penny so I pull the penny out what was the chances that I got a penny on my first pull well, total outcomes is 15. There's 15 coins in there. How many of them are pennies? Five. All right, people get used to writing a one in the numerator, but it's not always a one. Yeah, there was only one pair of converse. Yeah, there was only one three on the dice. Yeah, there's only one tails on the coin. But in this cup, there's more than one penny. So the top number is how many of this letter are there? Right? And sometimes there's more than one, like in problems like this. There's five. Okay, now how many dimes are there? Well, I replaced that penny, so there's still 15 coins in there when I go to take the second coin out. How many of them are dimes? Four. All right, and then it's just a multiplication problem, and you're going to have to reduce this fraction, so you might as well reduce it first to make your life easier. Turn this into a one-third times four-fifteenths. And then you get 4 over 45, and that's your answer. 4 over 45. There's a 4 out of 45 chance of pulling out a penny and a dime. All right, now what if we do not replace that penny without replacement? Well, the penny stays the same. We're starting over. There's a cup with 15 coins in there. Five of them are pennies. So it's still 5 over 15 for the penny. The dime now... I took that penny out and I did not put it back in. So when I go to take my second coin out, now there's only 14 in there. How many of them are dimes? Four of them. So now we can reduce both these fractions to one third and to two sevenths and we end up with two over 21. There's a two out of 21 chance of getting a penny and then a dime if I do not replace that penny. So it changes the answer. So you have to pay attention to with and without replacement. All right, if it's without replacement, your denominator goes down by one on the second pull. If it's with replacement, it stays the same. So there's your crash course and probability. You guys had probability before. So some of this should look familiar. Let me show you one more thing. What if it says uh, flip a coin five times, five flips, and they want to know what's the probability that they're all tails? 
Well, that's still a multiplication. That's like an and problem. That's like saying probability that the first one's a tail and the second one's a tail and the third one and the fourth and the fifth. All right, sometimes you'll see the word all, all tails or in a row, five tails in a row. They're all just and problems. It's a multiplication problem. It's what's the chance of that first flip being a tails? One half. Every time you flip a coin, it's one half. One half, one half, one half. And means multiply, so you'd multiply all those together and you get one out of 32. Oops. So there's 32 outcomes when you flip a coin five times in a row. I'm not going to list them all. You just multiply one half five times in a row and you get one over 32. So there's a one out of 32 chance. So you can run that experiment at home if you want to. You could flip a coin five times in a row and chances are if you do that experiment 32 times, only once are you going to get them all to be tails. So it's not very likely that that will happen. All right, I think that's enough to get you through the benchmark. You guys are smart. If you have any questions, please let me know.